Hi, I'm April Stott. I'm a freelance illustrator of kids' books, card games, magazines, and I am also an art class volunteer. Today's lesson is a super simple oil pastel still life that can be tailored really to any age. Today we're working with Maya, who's 13, and Reese, who is four and a half. Before I begin art in a classroom, I usually try and set some expectations. So we go over my art rules. And the first one is that this is fun. Some kids have a little bit of art anxiety, but I don't want them to feel like they're going to mess up or that anyone's going to be mad at them. I just want them to relax and try their best. The second is be nice to yourself. If you wouldn't say it to your friend, don't say it to yourself. Uh, it's hard to create something when you're being really critical, but if you are just having fun, it's way better. The third is respect the supplies. Have fun, but make good choices. And then um, sometimes we have to reset the mood of the classroom before we begin because the kids are a little too excited. So we'll do some yoga breaths, just the breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Sometimes we repeat it about 10 times, but then they get the hint and we start. This is what the box of crepa looks like, the oil pastels. I have a supply list at the end. I've also trimmed down this paper because if you leave it too big, sometimes it can get overwhelming. And we have the apples to look at to make our scientific and artistic observations. Before we start, we're tracing with our finger about where on the paper we want the apple to go, kind of visualizing it before we start. And then we're going to rough in a really simple um, circle and we're not worried about making it perfect, we're going to come over this circle a whole bunch. And I'm coloring it in, but look at how fast and quick and rough I'm making it. It's not going to be perfect because we're going to be coming over this apple a lot with our different colors to refine it. Um, the yellow is our underpainting. Um, next we're going to come with the red, and we're making an observation about where the stem sits, comes out of the apple. And I have them make a little smiley face because it's kind of a little smiley face shape. It's not on the very top of the apple, it's down from the top a little bit. And then I'm circle, making the outline of my apple just to clean up the shape a little bit. This is especially important for the younger ones. Sometimes the oil pastels will get um, worn down a little. Just have them peel the paper off. And if you actually run out of colors, you can peel all the paper off and break some of them in half. So we're making an observation that the apple is red, but it's not all red. There is a whole bunch of other colors there. And to emphasize the, sh the round shape of the apple, I'm doing lines from where the stem comes out down, but I'm not coloring my apple in all the way. I made an observation that my apple is mostly red at the top. Maya, our 12-year-old on the right, made an observation that her apple was mostly red on the left, and then it kind of um, has a gradient over from the left to the middle of the apple that's a lot of yellow. And Reese, our four-and-a-half-year-old on the left, she noticed the same thing. Now we're taking some green because where the stem comes out, it's really green. So we have the light green color from the Sakura set. And the apple also has a lot of green on the bottom of my apple, where the yellow is. So I'm adding some there. Everyone's apple may look a little bit different, but we're, everyone's apple probably has a little bit of this green if we're all using the same kind. Reese, our four and a half year old, is making some excellent observations. So is Maya. We're taking a little bit of the red and then a little bit of the orange to kind of refine where our color is a little bit. Uh, when I do art with kids, they get so sick of hearing me say this, but less is more. We're just adding a tiny bit of orange because we're not drawing an orange. We're just um, emphasizing some of the color. Now we're making an observation about where the shadow is on the apple, and it kind of curves up the side of the bottom of the apple. And I'm using blue to contrast between the warm red and orange yellow of the apple and then the cool blue shadow. We'll also add some black later, but we're just starting with blue. We're adding a little shadow where the stem will come out also. Now we're taking the brown and we're making a thin, delicate stem. Have 
the kids make an observation of where their stem on the apple is and try and copy that. And we're taking a little bit of black on the stem and at the bottom of the shadow. We did a little black at the very base of the stem and then at the top, just in case you didn't catch that. Again, less is more. We're not going to get crazy with the black because it can really overpower your picture if you use too much. I like having apples there for the kids to reference. Not every student needs their own. We can share you know, one apple to every four students or one for every pod where they're sitting. Now we're talking about foreground and background. And we're going to draw the foreground or the table that the apple's sitting on. And for this picture, we're going to do it in a bluish green tone. And we're going to start by drawing. We're not drawing a line right under the apple. We want to show that the apple is sitting on top of the table, not sitting on the edge of the table. So the line came from the side of the paper into it till it hit the apple, and then you jump over the side and draw it on the other side. Now with the younger kids, you especially have to help them understand that they're only going to be coloring the foreground or the bottom of the picture from their line down. They usually do pretty well. And then we're adding a little bit more shadow with the blue. I told Reese, our four and a half year old, to pretend like she was drawing a little blue worm just right under her apple. And then we added some more blue, just really rough scribbling on top of the table. Now we're layering our colors. We've already done it on the apple, and now we're going to layer the colors on the tablecloth. So we're coming over with some more green of the light green. And again, we're not worried about making it perfect. This is just fun. It's, you want to see some of the beautiful uh, scribbly marks that you make, not blend them all away. Now you see Reese on the right. Sometimes to help kids understand the pressure they should be using, I use the terms whisper and scream. When we first start out with a sketch, we whisper with our oil pastel or we whisper with our pencil. But for this part, we're really screaming with our oil pastel because we're, we're blending a lot of color in, but we're not going to overwork it. Maya got a little bit of red mixed in her green on accident. The nice thing about oil pastels is you can take your fingernail if you get some of these rogue colors showing up and just scrape them off. You can also come back and add a little bit of texture. Um, with your fingernail just by scraping off the top layer. It won't take away all the color, but you can see I'm doing it right now, but it'll just add a little bit of a pattern just to try something new. I try to really get the kids to make observations and to kind of think outside the color box. If they see purple on their apple, I wholeheartedly encourage them to add some purple to their apple. So now we're taking the light green and we're blending in where we added the brown, the black on top of the brown of the top and bottom of the stem just to kind of make it look more cohesive. And now is the time where we can come back and look at our apple and say, I think I want a little bit more red, or I think I see another color that I want to add a little bit of, so they can make their final observations. I felt like the green of the, oh wait, nope, sorry, right here I'm adding a little bit of pink, uh, just to blend some of the orange and the yellow together. Again, less is more. I'm not coloring over the whole thing with pink. And then I felt like the green of the tablecloth was a little too saturated. So we're taking some peach to tone it down. The opposite of green, the complementary color, is red. And peach is in that family. So that helped tone our bright tablecloth down a little bit and make it a little more 
subdued. Um, I felt like I needed a little bit more blue underneath to emphasize my shadow. I'm going to have them make the observations on their apple. I want to empower them as much to make it their own, even though we're all doing the same project. Now we're making an observation about where the highlights are. Of course, it's going to be different from whatever view you're looking at it from. Um, but we're going to take our white oil pastel. And this is really fun and a little bit scary for some kids. But we have yeah, pushed down really hard and just run right across those beautiful colors of your apple. And there you have it. I usually have them write their names on their art with pencil, not oil pastel, because it can be hard to write a small name in oil pastel. And, um, I don't want them to um, take away from their drawings. So when we finish, we usually write our artist signature in the bottom corner. And there you have it. Here's a little close-up, again, of their art. Maya's is on the left, it's beautiful, and Reese's is on the right, and I love little kid art, it's so cute. Thanks so much for watching. Here's the supply list. I will also add it to the description of the video below, and let me know if you have any questions.